Good afternoon, everyone. Since everybody's still ready, we thank Lord for this day and to praise Him with thanksgiving in our hearts for all our blessings and gifts. Let us bow our heads and feel the presence of the Lord as we pray for our batchmates who have gone ahead of us and are now in the vineyard of the Lord. May their souls rest in the mercy of God. Amen. Almighty Father, thank you for this moment, allowing us to witness the Young Cicero oratorical contest and to participate in any way fitting for the success of this momentous event. We pray that the eight finalists will render the best according to the criteria set for them. We pray that the class of 67 are with sound mind, body, emotions, and spirit. We are now in our youthful age to old age, but we remain vital and green. We ask you, Lord, to guide the panel of judges and tabulators. Give them wisdom and fair decisions for the success of this event. Oh, Lord, for you alone are our hope for a smooth and proper and successful conduct of the grand finals of the contest today. All this is offered for the glory of your name in the unity of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Before we start with the program, the first thing I'm going to do is to thank, give thanks to Batch 1967, who sponsored this program, especially Dr. Aloysius Liagono. And first and foremost, Mrs. Natalia Lasso. What's your family name again? <laughs> who really exert much effort to make this program push through. Okay. The next part of the program is a welcoming address coming from Natalia Lasso de Villa. Hello, our distinguished guests, Dr. Salome S. Carino, our INHS principal, Mr. Silvino B. Cabangan, the assistant principal, Dr. Lorna Lynn R. Pagulayan, the English Language Arts Coordinator, Mr. Elias A. Abelia Jr., the ELA and Journalism Teachers, the Deborah Deck Debate Oratorical Declamation Advisor, Mrs. Francisca B. Gingab, the incumbent principal during the launching of this project, the Young Cicero Oratorical Contest, Dr. Marieta Reyes Lozada, our former Deborah Deck Coordinator, Mrs. Lilia Menita C. Acosta, the INHS Class 1967 members headed by Dr. Aloysius V. Liaguno, the Board of Judges and Tabulators, the eight finalists or contestants, parents, friends, visitors, a pleasant good afternoon. We are so blessed that we had overcome the crisis that affected us for the past three years. We are also thankful that we are here again. We are gathered here to witness the 2023 Young Cicero Oratorical Contest Grand Finals, which we all know that every contestant exercises his or her own potentials as a good leader with self-confidence and conviction. We are therefore congratulating each and every one of you with enthusiasm who are here today with one mind, one body, and one spirit for the well-being of our youth's future and the hope for a better tomorrow. You and I are a part of this endeavor for sharing with us your talent, treasure, and your time your presence is our delight. Thank you very much, 
and we welcome you all. God bless everyone. The next part of the program. The next part of the program are updates. It will be done by Ms. Nympha Castaneda Pagirigan. Good afternoon, Isabella High School, class of 1967. Proudly presents updates of this most sought-after project, the Young Cicero Oratorical Contest as it goes down to history. From six grand finalists to eight grand finalists. That is the first one. Again, one of the requirements before that we modified last 2020. The grand finalists who garnered first prize and second prize were disqualified to join the next events. Since 2020, only the first prize is disqualified to participate in the next events. Number three, we didn't specify the grade levels of the eight finalists. Number four, the eight finalists will be introduced two times with their names. But the second one after the drawing has been conducted, contestants will be introduced again by the number. They will be called to perform according to their number. Number five, the INHS debate oratorical declamation and extemporaneous speech club advisor now is Mrs. Francisca B. Gingham. Number six, we officially adopted Dr. Marieta Reyes Lozada as member of class 1967 Young Cicero Oratorical Contest, and that she will be one of the tabulators. Thank you very much. The next part of the program is the presentation of guidelines and rules of the contest. That is A, and B is the presentation of criteria for judging. The first part, it will be done by uh, Ms. Jesusa Panig Cabrera about the presentation of guidelines and rules of the contest. Marcus Tilius Cicero once said, as food of the body, his words and persona are the reasons why we are here today. To the primary benefactors of this humble event, my dearest batchmates, class 1967, led by our very own president, Dr. Aloysius Liaguno, the hardworking principal, Mr. Silvino Cabangan, the diligent department heads, the intelligent mentors of this great institution, guests, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant afternoon. I was tasked to share these guidelines, requirements, and rules of the Isabella National High School Young Cicero Oratorical Contest for this year, 19, uh, 2023. Among the guidelines are the following. Number one, every student from 7th to 12th grades is eligible to participate at the preliminary contest as part of the celebration of the Education Week in November 2022. The preliminaries have been facilitated by the Deborah Deck advisor together with the English teachers from the junior and senior high school last year. Number two, the student contestants should be the ones to write their own piece. Number three, the eight contestants who will garner the highest points in the preliminaries will compete in the grand finals held during this foundation week which is now today, March 16, 2023. Number four, there should only be one quotes per contestant. Number five, the contestants who garnered the first place won't participate 
in the incoming event. Number six, please be advised to follow the guidelines, requirements, and the criteria for a rhetorical contest prepared by the committee from the class 1967. Now, let me read to you the requirements. Requirements for the INSS Young Cicero Oratorical Contest of Class 1967. Since the title is given to the students ahead, they should, ha they should have come up with a piece containing 650 words, but not more than 700 words. The, uh, this includes the articles except the pronoun I, which is counted. That is the only one letter word that is counted in this piece. More than 700 words will be penalized as well as the below 650 words. So we should follow the 650 to, to not more than 700. The piece should be memorized or delivered by heart. And last but not the least, the essay should be typewritten, double space, and must be given to the assigned secretary and to be handed in to our coordinator, Mrs. Natalia Lazo de Villa, on March 3 at 3 p.m. I hope this was, this was already uh, complied by the contestants. Okay, take note of the good news. All finalists will be given cash prizes and trophies or medals accordingly. Coaches will also be given cash prizes and plaques as well. The theme of this year's oratorical contest is I belong to the D digital technology generation. And this was carried from the 2020 uh, contest. The rules are the following. Number one, the piece should be memorized. Essay or pieces are collected two weeks before the grand finals. It's already been done. Number three, essay should be typewritten, double space. Okay, it's already uh, noted. And uh, this copies must uh, have been given to the uh, evaluators, the judges. Number four, during the presentation, all phones must be turned off or in mute. Please lang, we'll follow this, ano? Walang magubukas ng cell phone. Please mute your cell phones while the contest is going on. All audiences are requested to refrain from standing while the contestant is delivering his piece or her, her speech. This will, uh, so that there will be no distractions among the speakers. Number six, complete silence from the audience is expected. Mula pong clapping. The panel of judges is composed of INH class 1967 members only. And finally, number eight, may we request the audience to refrain from giving applause while the judges and tabulators have made their decision. At this juncture, may I also take this opportunity to give you a gentle uh, reminder. After the four performances, we shall have 10 minutes break and the CRs are just behind the, this room. And uh, we will uh, resume immediately after that, after 10 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the guidelines, requirements, and rules of the INHS class Young Cicero Oratoric Oratorical Contest. Let us now sit back and relax. And let, and let us marvel the brilliance of the young Cicero contenders. Good afternoon and thank you, everyone. Cicero survived during the time of Julius Caesar. I think he died 
tragically under the hands of Mark Anthony, best friend of Julius Caesar. Some of you probably know that. Hopefully. Second part of presentation of guidelines and rules of the contest is a presentation of criteria for judging. It will be done by Natalia Lazo de Villa and Azusa C. Asri. Good afternoon to Dr. Brendan Ferrolino, the husband of the late uh, Jocelyn Amigo Ferrolino. I didn't see you a while ago, doctor. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to start with the criteria of judging the oratorical contest. I just have to give you the introduction and then to be continued by Mrs. Jesusa C. Azurin of Las Vegas. There are three major categories in the criteria of judging. We have the essay, it's the substance or the content. And the second one is the delivery. And the third one is the audience impact, okay, or stage presence. Now, in giving the percentage of these three categories, the essay has only 40%. And the delivery and the audience impact is 60%. So that's 50 and 10 makes it to 60. Since this is oratorical, I gave more points for this delivery. And our board of judges are just from our class 1967. They had the essays two weeks ago. So they have already mastered the essays of the eight contestants with your initials. They do not know who you are. That's why they did not even attend the semifinals and the, uh, uh, what do you call this? Uh, that you had last February to avoid familiarity. Now they know your uh, essays already. So they will just be concentrating with your delivery and audience impact. So that would be 60%. Uh, Mrs. Jesusa Azurin will uh, say some of the things in detail so that the audience will really understand how we give grades to the eight finalists. Though they are all winners already, congratulations. A pleasant afternoon to everyone. I was assigned to read the criteria for oratorical contest. The letter A contains of substance which covers the 40%. We have the relevance of the topic, 10%. We have the originality or creativity, which is 10%. We have the rhetorical organization, which is 10%. We have the grammar, 10%, for the total of 40%. Letter B is the delivery. We have the quality of the voice of 10%. We have the gesture, movements, and the eye contact, which is 3%. We have the fluency, master of the speaker, which is 10%. Correct pronunciation, 10%. Ability to interpret emotion by changing the rate, pitch, and the volume of his or her voice, 10%. Ocean's impact and stage presence covers the total of the entire speech as delivered by the speaker, whether it has the audience or not, regardless of whatever reaction it may have evoked in the judges, 10%. So this is all for the criteria for judging oratorical contests. I thank you and have a great day to all. God bless us.
I will present, I will be presenting to you the Board of Judges and the Tabulators. The judges is being headed chairman by Dr. Elena Camonayan Ariola, current Vice President of St. Ferdinand College, Mr. Isabelo P. Benitez, Belong, <laughs> Mr. Francisco M. Bulan Jr., Mrs. Petronila Kerubin Larugal, the best pitcher <laughs> during our time, Mrs. Aurelia Pitpit Logrigito, Mrs. Everlita Aquino Pagirigan, and my BFF, Mrs. Rosario Lubo Kibael. Our tabulators are the following. Mrs. Seonila Ordinario Agpawa, Madda. Dr. Marieta Reyes Lozada, ma'am. And Miss Alvira C. Lucas. Okay, that's all, folks. That's my part. Good afternoon. Thank you. The next part of the program, let me pick it up. The next part of the program is the introduction of contestants and their coaches will be done by Perlam Nicolás Muto. Good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow classmates of Isabella National High School, class of 67, guests, parents, and students of Isabella National High School. Good afternoon, everyone, uh, for coming this afternoon. This oratorical contest aimed to develop and showcase these students, their talents and potentials to prepare themselves for their future career, careers and professions. Without further ado, it's my pleasure and privilege to present to you the eight finalists with their coaches. Mia Vianca Damasco and her coach, Jocelyn Manaliga. Edelito Dalipa. And his coach, Sharon Sipagan. Ashley J. Guzman. And his coach, Miss Chrysolite K. Guzman. Okay. Persis Agape Maduma. With her coach, Miss Jaislyn Beroy. Next one is Marl Ayrnil de la Cruz. And his coach, Lizelle Revilla. Okay. The next one is Maxine Alia Malabal. With her host, Mr. Joey Passion. And the next one is Saibel Gia R. Simpson. With her host, uh, Ms. Narcisa Cabalonga. And the next one, and the last one, is Princess Sarah F. Ventura with her coach, Miss Arlene Mainigo. Let's give them a round of applause. This event is one of the highlights of students' life of Isabella National High School. And I'm happy to be part of this occasion. Thank you very much and good afternoon again. Thank you. The next is the uh, contest proper. Drawing of lots, it will be done by Ms. Meti Borsia Cabasal 
and Miss Teresa Kurmeng Hugo. our human interactions. The world will have a generation of idiots. As Albert Einstein once said, do you all think you agree with him? We all are aware that digital technology has dominated the modern era and has a significant influence on every facet of our life. But does all of this make us a bunch of idiots? To my dear friends, teachers, fellow INHCNs, to the class of 1967, and to our honorable judges, good morning. In the 21st century, Digital technology has grown exponentially. This is due to groundbreaking technological advancements such as smartphones, lightning fast internet, computers, and the rise of the prosperous tech firms. Our connectivity, entertainment, and the general way of life have all been improved by digital technology. It enabled us to stay in touch with our loved ones during pandemic while being apart and confined in our homes to prevent viral infection. It also made our life easier because we can now purchase item, items at Shopee or Lazada online. Moreover, we have witnessed the force of politics through election campaigns which propelled each contender to victory. However, there have been numerous errors as widely disseminated fake news has attempted to obstruct the light we have yet to encounter. We have seen how the power of digital technology generation can change a person's life better for the better or worse. Now, I hope it is apparent to you all what I mean when I claim that digital technology has now ingrained itself into our daily lives. In fact, without technology, we can't even begin our day, correct? The highest level of human life is present in our generation. We would assist if we wish to. If we respond to older individuals when asked about politics, we expose ourselves to harsh criticisms. Not only do members of my generation speak up, but we also fight for what is right. We may have occasionally considered Einstein's remark that our generation is one of the Morans. Possibly someone has previously mentioned it to us. We nevertheless continue to act morally despite these. We won't all agree on the same thing. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, that is the beauty of diversity. Remember, take note in mind that once people stop making hasty judgments about our perspectives or degree of experiences, a healthier society will quickly emerge. And I know that this is possible 
because I trust in my generation in making this world a better place to live. I know the power of my generation because I belong to the digital technology generation. One thing I have learned being in this generation is that nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible to change, to control, to conquer, to innovate. The catalysts, they say. Catalysts who can drive good growth around the world. To be a leader, to be, a, to be in a good way, or to be in a bad way. To be a philosopher or a professional is a change maker. And to be you, to be us, individually, every one of us is a change maker. In this generation of my fellow young people, the quick rise of change makers, along with the easy access to the internet and technology, makes sense given that having influence over what is right and wrong creates a significant impact in this world. Power speaks. Once again, power speaks. And this generation defines power differently. We are born digital, with digital brains, in search of experiences and want to act. To be at the present, learning is a part and the power of nature. Learning is advancing. But somehow, people abuse this power of learning and the power of advancing to improve. And still, nothing can be done to stop it from advancing. I believe that technology is a catalyst for a change in learning. Everyone is living constantly surrounded by digital technology. But I am certain of the power of my generation existing in an environment of technology in making this world a healthier place to live. Not just to live, but to survive and to exist. Speaking and standing in front of every one of you. From the STE grade 10 silver, my name is Princess Sara F. Ventura, proud to be a part of this age because I know and I have seen and I have trust to the power of my generation because I belong to the digital technology generation. Thank you. <laughs> Greetings and good afternoon. May I have all of your attention, please? Am I now having all of your attention? Now I have all of your attention. Now let me rephrase that a bit. Does digital technology have our attention? The answer is yes. That is why I, Mia Bianca D. Damasco, is now standing in front of you to speak about this matter. I am a youth. A youth with virgin abilities learning inside this academic sphere was born in a generation where modern technology takes place in the community. Where ICT is considered to be the second body of us humans because of its various life-saving features. And not to mention that we, the humans, are slowly starting to depend on the tricks of the digital world. So therefore, I must say that I, a Filipino student speaking in front of you, teachers and students. And we, the people living in this civilization, do belong in a digital world because we are born in this timeline. To further follow my introduction, digital technology is the oxygen for us netizens. The views in our surroundings are slowly starting to look like wires, cables, and monitors. 
we started seeing ourselves as human robots where we charge our energies through our mobile devices. So the question is, is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? Well, it's obvious that we see many failures of the digital technology. It can ruin our days. But there are also times that digital technology is so successful that it can help us complete our days. A matter of fact, we use this in our daily lives. We wake up in the morning with our alarm clocks doing the work. We heat our foods using ovens, toasters, and microwaves, while we freeze our foods using refrigerators and freezers. And even in our self-care techniques in order to maintain our physical features, using high-tech transportation in order to travel towards our desired places across the globe. And let me also mention, which was mentioned many, many, many times, that we use digital technology to communicate, to communicate with one another, whenever, whenever, whatever, wherever, with whoever we want. Wow, isn't it? And let me also add that digital technology helps us improve our talent. How? By watching various tutorials from various online platforms. Plus, it also enhances our education. How? By using educational software features. Software features to words that it helps us save our money, time, and efforts. Just wow! And lastly, digital technology helps us get to know one another. Culture to culture, tradition to tradition, and heritage to heritage. One, two, three, four, and more countries inside this planet and even outside this planet. The other planets, the solar system, the galaxy, the universe, and more theories of reality because of our discoveries. And what makes us discover those things? The digital technology. You see, digital technology is the key to connect everything in this reality. Despite all the advantages and disadvantages hardwares and softwares had brought to us, in the end, we still seek for it in order for our days to flow better. No matter who you are, where you look, whenever it is, consists of digital technology that applies to our lives. But, but, Digital technology is just a tool in our generation, but not a life. Yes, we depend on it, we seek for it, we lean on it, but it won't save us fully. It only helps doctors to heal a patient, but it won't save a patient by itself. It only helps scientists to identify a bacteria, but it won't kill a bacteria by itself. It only helps chef to cook us food, but it's not edible enough to fill our stomach. We cannot deny the fact that digital technology is always there by our side in our life. But once we die, digital technology won't be there with us anymore. Am I right? Am I right? It will be gone and gone and gone. Where is digital technology? Nobody knows. Because what we know is how to look at our screens. What we know is how to tap on those monitors. What we know is how to press on those remote controls. Those are what we know because we became ignorant human beings. We act as if our lives are plugged into the ICT. Because you see, digital technology only makes our life easier, but it won't give us a long life. It makes our life easier, but it won't give us a long life. So let's start unplugging those wires and start depending on our own human abilities. Because my point is, we, the people in this generation, 
the people from the previous generation and the people to the following generation. We the people, we are people. Digital technology is just digital technology. We created them using our knowledge, strength, and abilities. In fact, we are more powerful and educated than those hardwares and softwares because we control them using our hands. And because we are humans with gift and knowledge and talent, and we belong in this digital technology generation because we created this digital technology generation. Always, always remember that. Once again, I'm Mia Bianca Di Damasco. Thank you for your attention. I was browsing the web one day, and I came across this very thought-provoking statement about technology. It says, that technology is comparable to an iceberg. People can only see the tip of it, while the remaining 80% is submerged underwater. This thought made me pause and ponder upon the vastness and complexity of technology that we have today. As digital natives who were brought up during the emergence of digital technology, this hidden part of the iceberg is often taken for granted. We think that certain perks like ease of access to almost anything in the virtual world is just a normal thing. This was not the case in the past. Nowadays, we thrive in the existence of electronic gadgets search engines and automated machines seemingly lifting our burdens. Digital technology continues to challenge our predetermined standards. More outspoken, bold, and daring than any generation before. Reshaping the experience of life through digital personalities. This is the tip of the iceberg easily recognized. For the past few decades, technological tools paved way for some rapid and irreversible changes in all levels of society. Tasks become easier to accomplish, and information, quite literally, is at our fingertips. Technology impacts lives through its greatly expanded information access. We actively engage in processes like communication, synthesis, problem solving, and reflection. Its mere presence encourages the youth to acquire these higher order thinking skills, which I believe is the true goal of its existence. Integrating technology in my life has helped me stay engaged with the limitless amount of opportunity no longer constrained by barriers of classrooms in the pursuit of learning. Technology allows us to have all of these things. Integrating technology in my life has helped me broaden my perspective. The horizon is now more extensive. Thus, we must be more intensive in our strategies to forward advocacies. This is merely 20% that stays afloat on the surface of the water. What we choose to only look at. On the other hand, there is a hidden part of the iceberg that people fail to notice because of the benefits mentioned. Technology is so vast and there is a lot at risk from plagiarism, disconnectedness, to even thinking abilities in jeopardy. It should improve networking. But here's the hard part, to curate what we connect to. We stay in bubbles and polarize by clamoring for change in echo chambers where people are simply out of touch. Accessibility of information is so deep that we let it get the better of us. 
There is more than what meets the eye. This is the majority of the iceberg, far off from the surface of the water that we fail to see and address. This is the price that comes within living in the new millennium. Though we are not at fault, I am my own witness in this world where a lot has changed and a lot had been forgotten. While we are fully embracing the changes brought upon us by technology, we must acknowledge the important lessons of yesterday. An equilibrium between embracing innovations and breakthroughs while holding on to the timeless principles of life. Technology is more complex than we think. We tend to use it how we see it, rather than thinking of the effects that come with it beforehand. belong to this generation known as different, perhaps more technologically inclined. But no matter how far we reach in terms of technological advancement, we must always apply important lessons from the past. The motivations we have now are the same goals our ancestors have shed their blood for. The things we keep close to our hearts, our being, are no different from that of those in the past. The values I carry are the same in this lifetime and the next, and I intend to keep it that way. To have honor above all, to lead life with a heart, and to never lose faith. As said by a famous philosopher, life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. Once upon January 27th of 2009, I was born into the age of digital technology. Throughout the course of human civilization, technological innovation has been a crucial factor in affecting social, economic, political, and cultural transitions. These great changes in humanity can be felt with the advent of this age. Like a magic wand, I can have whatever I desire with just a single tap on my gadget at my convenience. I have witnessed how the different societies of the world have transformed from crudity and basal simplicity to fabulous modernity and great sophistication. So modern and sophisticated societies, including ours, have become gone. Are the crude gadgets of yore now replaced by electronic and digital equipment? A desire to confront problems and find solutions is what drives people to create and use technologies. The United Nations says digital technologies have advanced more rapidly than any innovation in our history, reaching around 50% of the developing world's population in only two decades and transforming societies. The evolution of technology has made it possible to achieve a lot easier in less time. I can sit at home comfortably and make use of online banking, online shopping, video calling, attending video lectures on several gadgets, and several other things which have all been possible through the invention of the internet. These technologies have not only helped in the digital platform, 
but have also given innovations and advancements in the medical, educational, industrial, and agricultural sectors, especially during the pandemic, granting everyone a great shot at life. <laughs> With all the aforementioned, I would like to ask, is this the realization of the great utopian dream? Have we finally established an ideal and perfect society? This revolution took the world by storm, but it did not come without harm. The lack of organizational change management and security abuses the inherent services of digital technologies. And that's my concern. I fear that today we put a normative emphasis on online hate, disinformation, abuse, and trend cancel culture, which have posed threats against our rights and raised the risk of glossing over historical trajectories, cultural subtleties, and evolving ground realities. And as articulated by former European Union Ambassador Charles Whiteley, Digital technology isn't neutral. However, the technology is not to blame. Rather, it is the people who use technology. To say it is clothed in perfection is tantamount to peddling the biggest lie ever told. While great advances in technology have been recorded, the basic problems of humanity remain unabated. Turning a blind eye to this crisis hinges on the imperative for immediate action. Hence, values are categorized. Issues minimized. And people, you and me, are dehumanized. Like a busted machine, our society needs a complete overhaul. It'll be absurd of me to offer quick fixes and simple solutions in one breath, so I won't. But I'll suggest this. If we intend to bring our society toward the path of meaningful changes, if our utmost desire is to usher an ethereal progression upon this society, then we can start by using computational thinking, promotion of democratic norms and values, along with social cohesion, using digital technology, spreading wellness and awareness through digital technology could massively impact the world by encouraging informative and active change. But most importantly, it is not faith in technology alone. It is faith in the people. This is not the end, this 
will go on forever. I, Saibel Gia Singson, belong to the digital technology generation, the hopes of humanity. Every one of us has at least dreamt of having superpowers. When I was a little kid, I always wanted to become a superhero like Sailor Moon or Blossoms from Powerpuff Girls. Imagine having the power to combat evildoers and save people. The ability to fly, to teleport, and to, and to perform multiple skills all at once. For a young kid, that was a dream. But as human beings, it seems impossible for us to transport or to teleport to another place, to speed up our movements like the flash, or to perform multiple skills all at once. But ladies and gentlemen, we are now living in a digital technology generation, the age where we can learn and do everything all at the same time. And the one that has been deemed the most technologically advanced among all descendants. And in this kind of world, no dream is impossible. My courtesy to the Honorable Board of Judges, guests, teachers, friends, ladies and gentlemen, good day to everyone. I. I am Persis Agape D. Maduma, and I belong to this digital technology generation. The age where we can learn, tweet, read, watch, talk, and eat all at the same time. A talent that stuns adults and the elders. The presence of the digital instruments and the internet has turned their existence upside down. It has revolutionized communications, sped up our learning through the help of various sites on the web, and made our lives more convenient. It paved the way for the e-commerce industry to foster, which revived our economy in trying times. And it played a massive role in the economic, medical, and educational sectors of our society, especially in these past years when unforeseen circumstances such as the COVID-19 pandemic happened. However, belonging in this digital technology generation is more than just the digital advancements in our society. It is more than just being able to connect to the internet, being logged in to the various social media platforms to post things on Facebook or to document our daily activities on our Instagram stories. It is more than just having these intelligent gadgets that can do almost everything we can imagine. It is more than what technology has contributed to humanity. Rather, it is what we can do to our society through the power of technology. Belonging to this digital technology generation also means saving people from the dangers of rampant misinformation and disinformation, just like superheroes do. It also signifies having critical thinking skills to make informed decisions as users and producers of media and information. It also means having the ability to create, augment, or fact check media, as well as to raise awareness of different causes in our society. Ladies and gentlemen, the internet has given us these superpowers and we should not put these into waste. Let us use this to inspire other people to become better members of the society in accordance with the ideal principles of this world. Because of the digital technology generation that I belong to, I have this virtual intellect that is easy to acquire. My way of thinking has become broad, making myself not limited on conventional ways. It enabled me to combat the evil misinformation and disinformation. It gave me these superpowers to do things faster and even better. 
And lastly, it enabled me to connect to the world anywhere, at any time. I will use these superpowers to do things that will inspire other people to be the better versions of themselves. I once dreamt of having superpowers. And thanks to the digital technology generation that I belong to, my dreams came true. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I, Ashley J. B. Guzman, stand before you to talk about my generation, the digital technology generation. As a young person, I grew up surrounded by technology. From the moment I wake up, I'm immersed in it. I check my texts, social media accounts, and emails. I use the internet to find information and watch videos. And I use digital tools to do my schoolwork and to even pay for things. We are a generation that has seen unprecedented advances in the digital technology, from the personal computer that we use to learn about the world, to the smartphones that allow us to connect with anyone, anytime, anywhere. We have seen the rise of the social media and the power of the internet to instantly share ideas, photos, and videos to the world. We have seen how technology made our lives easier more efficient and more connected. We are a generation that is constantly connected to the digital world. We have grown up with the internet, social media, and the ability to access information and entertainment at our fingertips. Technology has become an integral part of our lives and has allowed us to connect with people we wouldn't have been able to otherwise. We are also more empowered than ever before. We can start movements and push for change. We can create our contents and build our businesses. And we are a generation that is pushing boundaries and challenging the status quo. We are redefining what it means to be connected. We are connecting with our, with our friends and families to stay informed about world events and to explore new interests and passions. We are using technology to bridge the gaps between cultures and countries, to make our voices heard, and to make a difference in the world. We are making connections with people from different cultures, backgrounds, and countries. We are using technology to find and build support for causes we are passionate about. We are using the internet to form and build support for causes we are passionate about. And we are making strong communities. We are building strong communities. We are making connections that were never before possible. We are creating an open, welcoming, an inclusive global community. We are using technology to create a world where everyone belongs. We are creating a world where no one is left out and everyone is respected. And we are building a world where we can all connect and belong. See, the digital technology generation is more connected, more informed, and more empowered than ever before. We are a generation making the world a better place through technology. But there are some downsides to this digital technology generation. First, we are more connected, but we are less in touch with each other. Second, we are more informed, but often inundated with too much information. And lastly, we are more productive, but often overwhelmed with too much tasks. 
We must be careful not to let technology take over our lives and instead use it to improve our lives. Again, use it to improve our lives. At the same time, digital technology can be a double-edged sword. We must be mindful of our use of technology and how it impacts our lives. We must also recognize that digital technology is no substitute for human interaction and human connection. We are all belong to the digital technology generation and it is our responsibility to ensure that we use it for good. We, this is all our shared responsibility and together we can ensure that this tool serves our communities and us in the best way possible. I am proud to be part of this, this digital technology generation. It's an exciting time to be alive. I'm excited to see where technology takes us and how it changes our lives and work. It's an exciting time to be alive and I'm thrilled to be able to witness and be part of this significant shift. We are all belong to the digital technology generation and we are ready to take on the world. Thank you. Technology grew in an instant and is still developing. Whereas the past generations witnessed the mesmerizing process of how technology has prospered. While we, the current generations are known as Generation Z, alongside with the Alpha generation and of course millennials, cherish what technology has provided. While digital technologies are any tools, systems, equipments, or resources that store, produce, or process data digitally, social media, online gaming, Multimedia and mobile phones are some of the popular examples of digital technologies. Well, I remember when I was 10 years old, my mother purchased me my very own first keypad phone so I could contact her whenever Uncle Max should pick us up from school and bring us home. She then bought me a new one, a smartphone one, so I could use it as an access of information for my studies and communication tool for my father who works in Manila. Eventually, I used that phone to play online games update my family and friends, and share images during my adult six years. Not only that, but I also use this phone to watch my favorite drama, listen to my playlist, and for my idols. In addition, according to the research of one of the digital fanatics, that social media acquired 190 million new users between only October 2021 to October 2022, or more than 500,000 new users every single day. In other words, there are six. Six new users join social media every single second, which is a significant increase in the numbers of users. See, almost everyone is using digital technologies. It just brings the whole world connected. It looks like a whole new generation, the digital technology generation, and I, at the Lito Manaligod Dolipe, the one standing in front of you, a member of Generation Z and a digital native, belongs to the digital technology generation. Well, it is not just me, but you. We all belong to this generation. A generation that living in progression and striving for solution. Furthermore, I have a pet named Selfie. At first, that pet is following me around, listening to my command and rules. But as time passes by, Selpie began to rule over me. Selpie made me stay up late and just focusing on playing him. Well, yes, my dear listeners, this is not only about my pet. This is the dark side of the digital technology generation. To remember that technology is a very useful servant, but a dangerous master. In contrary, in this era which we can interact with our loved ones even when the, in the other side of the globe, we can buy almost anything using online shopping applications and websites. Not only that, 
But this generation has discovered a mean for life to continue, particularly for us students. While pandemic was it at its peak, this generation cannot go out and study at school. Hence, online lesson began with mobile phones, computers, radio-based and television-based learning. This technique has also been employed in corporate meetings and entertainment sector. So to say that everything is perfectly going on, but on a new normal. Yet, some are worried if we're becoming smarter or merely more reliant. They are afraid if the humanity crosses technology, the future will only have a generation of fools, which I strongly disagree. We will have a generation holistically greater, wiser, and brighter because of the abundance of information brought by these digital technologies. It is hard to imagine a world without digital technology, a world without improvement. And if these technologies are no longer existing, we may be still seeking a way on how we can make our life easier. Yes, the world revolves, and as time passes, changes happen. It's inevitable. Whether we like it or not, your generation, my generation, our generation, and this generation is constantly growing. And we haven't encountered the fully developed technology yet. We don't know what the future holds. But I do know that even if life brings so many challenges, I belong to this generation. A generation living in progression and striving for solution. I am an advocate of this evolving technology breakthroughs. Yet, I'm digitally vigilant for the preservation of the entire humanity, its culture and tradition, which is worth living for. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. Stars. My polar print says it all. You, members of class 1967, headed by the marvelous president, Dr. Aloysius Viaguno, and the project coordinator of Young Cicero, Ma'am Natalia Lazo de Villa, are indeed the stars of my six fruitful years oratorical journey. What a journey it has been. Not to forget the three roses. The late Ma'am Rose Go Rodriguez, Ma'am Rose Calamba Castaneda, and Ma'am Rose Francisco Adorio. And of course, the late Ma'am Benita Butstoribio Zipagan. They were also my stars when they were still here with us. May they rest in peace and power. I am Marl Anal Narag de la Cruz, grade 12, thus signing off. And I humbly dedicate my final piece to you, class of 1967. I am both millennial and I belong to the digital technology generation. LCD, data analytics, and real-time connection. Sounds familiar? These fairly sum up the sweeping effect of modern technology on everyone, especially my digital generation. My generation is one group constantly connected to the world around, through smartphones, tablets, and computers. Because of this hyper-connectivity, we live differently than previous generations. The effect is pervasive. Digital technology is so ingrained. It has altered the landscapes of everyday life that we can now hardly move without it. We must admit, digital technology is like my donor twin. To survive today's modern jungle, I have attached to me like an umbilical cord. My personal computers, mobile phones, gaming consoles, tablets, digital cameras, and of course, the internet. How can I set aside multimedia and social media? 
they represent the now and then. Without them, I am figuratively dead. Tell me, can anyone survive now with telegrams and typewriters? Here's why. I use a great deal of digital technology for communicating and doing everyday activities. The phone alarm wakes me up every day, indicates my vitals, connects me to my busy mother and working father, and bridges the distance between me and my relatives who are oceans away. Social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram are means of expressing what is in my mind and seeing how people react. Work is easier. Punch wash, rinse and dry, and I get to help my parents wash our soiled clothes. Pressing the laundry is a lot easier too with the electronic iron. Just set the temperature, ironing is done. Cooking is no longer an issue. There is the microwave oven, online foods or grab foods. Travel is a lot easier now. I commute using grab. Hailing a ride right on the blazing street is no longer an agony. I can now commute comfortably as if the chauffeur's car is my own. Throw away the maps and let ways help find my way if my sense of direction fails. If there is one area where digital technology has a profound impact in me is in the area of learning. Distance learning is now the trend. From afar, there can be sharing of notes, e-group discussions, and tutorials. With the internet, assignments are submitted and exams are taken online. Digital technology helped me excel academically. Instead of notebooks or photocopied notes, I use the tablet and digital cameras to store notes and laptops to encode lectures. I serve the internet to research instead of scrounging through voluminous tomes in the library. I cram multimedia to make presentations and reports and jumpstart personal digital assistants to read ebooks. Digital technology practically provides unlimited information. It helps me analyze data, establish trends or patterns, and extrapolate information. Admittedly, Digital technology enabled distant families to remotely celebrate birthdays, anniversaries, weddings, graduations, and the like. It reconnects old and lost friends, stores memories from the past, highlights personal milestones and plans, and recalls good and bad news. These emphasize the impact of digital technology in my young life. The reality is that digital technology is now a way of life. That digital technology has a dark side, is also a reality. The digital divide between the previous generations and the digital generation is such that it has made relationships too impersonal transforms workplace into virtual, stockpiled digital garbage, popularized fake news, and generated cyber crimes like bullying, libel, and identity theft. Worst, my generation is labeled as spoiled, unfocused, lazy, and undisciplined. These are undeniable changes I felt and has affected schools, learning centers, and our society. More undeniable is the impact on previous generations, like the baby boomers and Generation X, including the still autumn class of 1967. 
who ask whether millennials in my generation are entitled to a radically different treatment. Previous generations have become tech savvy. The digital technology simply requires discipline and responsible use of its vast resources. Everyone should be part of the solution if the digital technology generation were to make an impact on future generations. Yes, when then, even robots are humanized and are made to think and feel like humans that we are wont to do. Indeed, I belong to Generation Z in the digital technology generation. I am wired. Generation Z in the digital technology generation. Long live young Cicero. Long live class 1967. Once again, I am Marl Anal Narag de la Cruz, your young Cicero, officially signing off.
introduce to you the three ladies who have been very, very supportive and dedicated in their role to help us make our project, the Young Cicero Oratorical Contest, very successful and spectacular. I would like to thank also the English Language Arts Coordinator, Mr. Abel, Mr. Uh, Abelia Jr., and all the teachers, including the journalists or the journalism teachers. Thank you. Without you, we do not have these eight finalists. Before I'm going to uh, call on the three ladies, I would like to explain about the crystal trophies that we are going to uh, give today. I tried my best to have the dates be changed. If it is the, the metal one, it's easy for them to change it. So now, just to let you know that, just to remember about the lockdown, because we should be having that contest last March 19, 2020, when I had it be uh, made, that was December of 2019, because that is crystal. You need to do it in advance. And now, they couldn't really change the dates, okay? So that's 2020, March 19. With the plaques, I was able to do that. Thank you. Now, we are pleased to introduce to you the first one to receive a certificate, cash, and gifts. She was the former coordinator of the Borodek Debate Oratorical and Declamation Coordinator, Mrs. Lilia Nenita de la Cruz Acosta. To please come forward and receive your awards. Um, I am uh, deeply humbled to receive this uh, special award. Mam Nati and Sir Aloy and the rest of the Class 67. Actually, I do not know what to say now, but uh, I felt dissident that the least of the littlest of the effort I have extended in this project, Young Cicero, for the past years had uh, left a very significant mark in your heart as expressed, as shown here, in what I have in front of me and in the certificate I am holding with cash prize pa. Parang tinalo ko pa dito yung mga contestants. But frankly speaking, sir, ma'am, working with high-caliber people of wits and wisdom like you is more than enough a compensation for a very mean contribution I have uh, shared during my time as the Deborah Dex Club advisor and the Young Cicero Oratorical uh, Contest Project Coordinator in the school. I um, consider myself lucky to have worked with you since working with you uh, enabled me to look at myself deeply as regards to how I work productively. With your presence, ma'am, and the rest of the Class 67, I learned to be more organized, I learned to be systematic and prudent, and became more patient and uh, uh, diligent in the call of an assigned task, especially in at times where uh, it is a rush hour. And I see all these things from Mam Nati and the rest of the Class 67. I also had the chance to uh, collaborate and mingle with fine people like you, Class 67, and uh, most especially at times when there are contests like this, the 
Are you? Semi finals and uh, this grand finals, I have the chance to be with beautiful people and smart people like you. So, maraming salamat sa uh, opportunity na yan. And of course, these uh, experiences and insights and learnings that I gained from you will be cherished and uh, valued. And I also would like to thank my former boss, Sir Bong, for the trust and confidence uh, given me during the time that I was here, and of course up to now, and my former principal, Sir Sylvine. Thank you very much, Sir, sa tiwala na pinagkaloob niya sa akin bilang uh, uh, isa sa mga taong tumutulong sa project na ito. So ano pa nga bang masasabi natin? Ang class 67 ay bongga. Sabi nga ng mga bata, bonggang bongga sila lalo na sa mga papremyo. Diba? Yun ang lagi nilang sinasabi sa akin. Because every year or every conduct of, the, ano, of, the, of this contest, talagang ang sobrang sobra. So rest assured ma'am, lahat ng mga na-learn ko sa inyo, ano na-learn? All the things that I learned from you will be valued. And thank you for this once again. Maraming maraming salamat. Is our present Deborah Tech advisor and is still here in the school, not like Mrs. Acosta, a retired high school teacher, and no other than Mrs. Francisca B. Gingab to please come forward and receive her awards. First of all, I just want to say how honored and thrilled I am to this special award. The success of this event makes me proud and it would not have been possible without my collaboration with the class of 1967. Thank you so much to everyone. Our collective efforts have made this event a success. I also want to express my sincere gratitude to the wonderful people who made it possible for me to be up here. To our school principal, Sir Silvino B. Cabangan, who gave me the chance to lead the Deborah Dex Club. To my department head, Sir Elias A. Abelia Jr., thank you for the trust, sir. It means a lot to me. This event has enhanced a really special memory in my life. Thank you, Ma'am Nati Lazo de Villa, for the reminders and kind words that truly inspired me. Class of 1967, you are a blessing to INHS students in so many ways. Our brilliant students and teachers have been waiting for this moment the grand finals of the Young Cicero Oratorical Contest. Even though our work is far from over, what we have managed to achieve together has already had an impact on the lives of our kids. I sincerely hope that this is not the end of our partnership. Our students need more opportunities to develop their abilities and broaden their experiences. This event, among others, would greatly help in achieving that. So once again, I want to thank you in advance for our future collaborations. Before I end this response, I would like to ask everyone to commit ourselves more than ever 
to finish this adventure we started. Once again, thank you and good afternoon. Last but not the least, she was the principal during the launching of this project, the Young Cicero Oratorical Contest, and she did a lot of preparations for us to the project. Even if she's already a retired principal, she's still assisting me and participating in many ways for the betterment of this project. She is my passport in coming inside the school even if it is a non-working holiday. Thank you very much, Doctora. Thank you, thank you. I'm so honored to present to you Dr. Marieta Reyes Lozada to please come forward and receive also your awards. And being my buddy all the time from the start of uh, this, uh, what, what do you call this again? When you have the rounds before the semifinals? No, before the semifinals. Uh, it starts with air. You forget sometimes. I ask, what is that word again? That when you eliminate, and she said elimination. That's correct. Elimination rounds from the classrooms to the semifinals. That's what they do. Everyone was as a participant or is a participant from grade 7 to grade 12. Thank you, Doctor. Again and again, I would like to thank the Isabella High School class of 1967 for this accolade that I keep receiving since the launching of this project. Thank you very much. Uh, my only, my only, my, my second joy is that this Young Cicero Oratorical Contest has returned to its original state after the three years halt because of the pandemic. And I'm very happy because we are here again. And um, my only prayer is that for you, uh, officers and members of the Class 67, to please continue this project because it is a platform which develops the writing and public speaking confid confidentially um, with confidence, I should say, of the students. You see, with this, they are able to identify their future careers because of this um, endeavor of this very laudable project of Class 67. Congratulations, Class 67. Thank you for my, for my um, adoption into the program the YCOC program, I am adapt adapted as a member. And please expect that whenever my help is needed, so please continue, huh? Whenever my help is needed, I am very willing to give you my assistance whenever, wherever, whatever. Thank you, good afternoon. Thank you so much, Ate Nati. You are pampering me so much. That we are back hearing the creative writings and oratory of our young Cicero finalists. Our class of 1967, on our 56th year since graduation, remain strong and committed sponsoring this educational endeavor. Please allow me to take this opportunity to recognize and thank the untiring effort of Nati Lasso de Villa. She has led this event for the past six years and her dedication, hard work, and attention to details is second to none. She has given us 
that next year she will step down as the project chairman and remain as consultant. Because of the complexity of organizing and preparing this event, we will have two co-chairmen from my class. Nympha Castaneda Pagirigan and Esperanza Amigo Cabrillas, both former faculty members of this institution. I'm sure that they will, they will have a tough act to follow. Nati, we cannot thank you enough. I am glad too that our class continued to search, recognize, and award outstanding alumni in any field through the Jocelyn Amigo Ferrolino Memorial Award. I remember in 1964, Isabella High School was the melting pot of the smartest students in Isabella. As first year high school, we were mingled together and we were sizing up. Oh, that guy from San Mariano, that guy from San Mateo. But this girl from Munoz Rojas, Jocelyn Amigo, was consistently in the top two from first year to fourth year and graduated as our class salutatorian. She was also a winner in oratorical contests. And I remember the piece she delivered, the life and works of Dr. Jose Rizal. She had a, a degree in, in Doctor of Medicine at the University of the Philippines, where she met her future husband, Dr. Brendan Ferrolino, who just came yesterday. They have four boys, all of them with a degree of Doctor of Medicine from UP. Her training in obstetrics and gynecology at PGH propelled her to clinical and academic practice at the De La Salle University College of Medicine. And with multiple scientific publications, led her to be appointed Dean of College of Medicine, De La Salle University. She passed on in 2013. The Jocelyn Amigo Ferlina Memorial Award. Tonight, I will introduce our second awardee and our honored guest. And her oration is entitled, Shaping Up Future Careers. Good for our contestants. She is a native of Ilagan, Isabella, has been a consistent honor student from elementary school to high school. She graduated at Isabella High School in 1971 and awarded third honor, third honorable mention. Got her bachelor's of science degree in elementary education in 1975, cum laude, at St. Ferdinand College. pursued higher education and got her master's degree in education, major in educational management at St. Ferdinand College in 1982. And then a doctor of philosophy degree in education, major in educational management 
at St. Paul's University in Tugigaral in 1991. She had a phenomenal ascent in academia at St. Ferdinand College. Beginning after college in graduation in 1975 as an elementary school teacher to acting principal at the elementary department in 1987, to being dean college of education in 1989, to being dean of graduate school in 1995, to being current dean of graduate school and vice president of academic affairs in 1999, to holding three titles in 2000, as Vice President of Academic Affairs, Dean of Graduate School, and Research Director. She became President of St. Ferdinand College in 2008, and for 13 years she held that position, retiring in 2021. So, Currently, she continues because of her love of teaching as a professor in graduate school at St. Ferdinand. She's a member of multiple prestigious academic organizations, and to name two of them, Philippine Association of Graduate Education, Philippine Society for Educational Research. She's a recipient of multiple honors. Third honorable mention in high school, cum laude in college, loyalty award at St. Ferdinand College, 20, 30, and 40 years, outstanding Sabella National High School alumni education, alumni in educational sector, outstanding educator, national level, October 2000. She is happily married to Cornelio Luquigan Cariño and blessed with three successful children, a lawyer, a banker, and a system developer in Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our awardee and honored guest, Dr. Solome Solomero Cariño. To our young Ciceros, their advisors and coaches, the principal of Isabella National High School, Sir Silvino Cabangan, his faculty and staff, the officers and members of class 1967, the ones who initiated the Young Cicero Oratorical Contest Project, BATS 71, my batsmates who are there, the parents who are present this afternoon, young alumni, and our visitors, graduates, good afternoon. Sometime in December, that was I think December 10, 2019, I received a text message from Dr. Alois informing me about the awarding of the Jocelyn Amigo Ferolina Medal which is supposed to be held in the March 2020. In his text message, he said, uh, you are chosen as one of the medalists for the uh, Amigo Ferolino Award, and at the same time, we request you to talk on your experiences as educator, the role of the school in helping the students in establishing or defining their future career. Unfortunately, with the outbreak of coronavirus in March 2020, the contest did not push through and the awarding too did not continue. So, I forgot all about it. Not until on January 17, Ma'am Nati De Villa emailed me reiterating the information Dr. Aloysius gave me on December 2019. And that is the reason why I am 
before you afternoon. And uh, I am so honored and humbled to have been chosen as the recipient of the second Jocelyn Ferolino, Amigo Ferolino Memorial Award this afternoon. Knowing Dr. Jocelyn Amigo Ferolino, who I found called Manang Josie, because her father, Uncle Jose, and my family, the Solomero family, are close friends. And Manang and Tanching knows that. So I, I saw how she grew up, and I know how she performed in her academics and in her profession. Manang Josie, or Dr. Ferolino, is an alumna who is worthy of emulation. She serves as an inspiration to our young Ciceros and to all of us who are here this afternoon. Hence, I would like to address my talk as requested by the organizers to our young Ciceros, giving them some tips on how they would design their career. To our dear students, let me ask you this question. Where are you going to be years from now? Maybe some of you three years from now, four years from now, or six years from now. What track, if you are in the junior high school, what track do you plan to be when you go into senior high school? And for those in senior high school, what course would you want to take when you go to college? Maybe you would think, that's too early a question to ask. But my dear, I would like to remind you, it's not early. Because shaping your career should start as early as now. Because it would guide you in choosing your track and in choosing your course when you enter into college. In other words, what are your career plans? What are your career goals? Some of you might say it's too early, but as I said earlier, it is high time that you make a roadmap for where you want to be, for where you want to go, and for what you want to be. I would remember Yoga Berry who says, that if you don't know where you are going, you end up somewhere else. But before understanding how to build a career successfully, it is important to remember that a successful career can mean different things. For some people, a successful career is one that provides most enjoyment. For some, a successful career is one that provides the highest salary. And a successful career might be both high salary and what you want to be. Now, if you put these things together, then it would become a good criteria for you to direct you to the career that you want to take. Regardless of how you define it, Achieving the goal, a successful career, can be an exciting and ever-empowering experience. 56 years ago, I was your age. Wondering, I also was wondering what career I would pursue when I graduated in high school. I spoke to my arcadas, to my high school friend, to my family, and to some teachers. But I still had no idea really of what I wanted to study in college. Although at first, I wanted to become a nurse. Why? Because I was enticed by the white uniform that they wear. However, when I had the chance to visit the hospital, to visit somebody who is sick, I saw the work the nurse do. And from that time on, it gave me a meaning of what I did not want to do. And so, I changed my mind. No more, at least na yun, eliminated na yung nursing. So I said, what would I be? My mother was a teacher. And so I said, 
I would like to take her footstep because I love children. I am the eldest of 11 children in the family. And I would assist my mother in taking care of my siblings. And that is what ignited my passion and love for children. And so, I was, uh, I was taken aback when I enrolled in St. Ferdinand College. I took up Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education. And mind you, I found enjoyment in my chosen course, especially when I went into practice teaching, where I was plunged into the real work of what a teacher should be. Then, I might liking the course, and in my 48 years of experience as an educator, I can tell you that there are only two alternatives for you, my dear students. Either you think about your career now, or you graduate in two or more years from now, nothing in mind of what track or what course to take if you are in the junior high school and in the college or senior high school. Now this reminds me of what Elizabeth Kobler Rose said. She's quote unquote, people are like stained glass windows. Your goals in life and soon your work. Hold on to your dreams, my dear students. Hold on them and work for them. Work hard to attain your goals in life and ensure your personal and later your professional growth that will provide you with a sense of achievement and importance of what you do. Trust me, my dear young Ciceros. In my 68 years of existence on earth and 48 years of work experience, I can say that people, including me, rarely get bored with their work, either their studies or professional work in the course of years, and are much, much happier than those who only work for money. So when you do your work with love, then there's nothing impossible for you to attain. The most difficult thing for many students like you is choosing the career that they would take in college and finding the right kind of job after finishing their studies. You will never know which exactly is perfect for you until you plan for it and work for it. The earlier you start setting your goals in life, the easier your journey towards success. Some will pursue their passion, the thing they love to do. Others will plunge into something their parents would like them to be, or what the barcada would go to, or what is trending. Lalo na kayo mga kabataan, mahilig kung ano ang trending. It is not something that you can attain one time and disregard it as being accomplished. I'm done, senior high school na ako. I'm done, college graduate na ako. It's not like that. Success might look different for every student, but the tools to achieve it are the same for all. Success is what you students desire and what you make of it. You can accomplish whatever it is that you want if you set your mind to accomplish, especially with the right motivation and the right attitude. Have a growth mindset instead of a fixed mindset. Now, what advice then can I give you, my dear students, so that you will have a clear direction of what career you would take? Now, let me share you some tips which I myself have adopted when I was in your, uh, in your uh, days, no? First, Know what you want. What exactly do you want? Choosing a career is bit a big deal. It is one of the most important decisions you will make in life. You will spend a significant amount of your life at work. Therefore, knowing what you want 
saves your time and money in the long run because you will have fully considered that particular career path. Second, find a career that aligns your values. I repeat, find a career that aligns your values. Your values are your foundation in making decisions, including your career choice. Aligning your career and your core values produces satisfaction, a sense of happiness, and fulfillment. The problem is when you graduate, what institution would fit your values? Knowing your values is perhaps easy, but the harder part of it is trying to identify if your future employer or company honors the same values that you have. Personally, I would have been a director or a school superintendent if I went to the public school. But my personal values, I saw it at St. Ferdinand College, so it made me stay there for 46 years. The spirituality, teamwork, excellence, productivity, and service. And those core values of St. Ferdinand College suit my values. That's what made me stick to St. Ferdinand College. Third, live out your passions. Passion not only desires or drives you to enjoy your work, but helps in overcoming obstacles. Your passion or purpose are often buried by judgments and principles that tell you what you love is not worth pursuing or that is not capable of supporting your family while doing something you love. Sabi nga ni Aristotle, pleasure in the job puts perfection in the work. The third, play your strengths. You know your strengths. Maybe one strength would not be effective. But if you gather together all your strengths, that makes it unique and that will make you uh, go easier in achieving your goals. And also, be aware of your weaknesses. Because unless you know your weaknesses, you would not know what to improve in yourself. The third is achieve mastery. There's a saying, practice makes perfect. Mastery is a set of skills or competencies that you want to improve on. So for instance, if you are good at writing, then maybe you can practice by writing novels, writing essays, writing letters. If you are good at singing, then hold that singing. Maybe you can, you can join in contests until you will be discovered as a singer. Okay? Again, your passion, your values and strengths should be your motivation. Fifth, freedom to have what matters to you. What matters to me is your freedom or is my freedom. This is about flexibility you want to achieve. If you want this, then you have to be flexible in order to attain what you want. Then, or successful career. The eighth tip that I would give you, don't be afraid to fail. Failure is a part of life, so don't be afraid. In one of his speeches, Rowling describes failure and imagination as the two essential ingredients for success. Failure takes you a step closer to your true passion, while imagination gives you the empathy that makes you a better person. This reminds me of the story of Ellen DeGeneres, who had an anecdote of struggles that being true to yourself gives you the freedom from fear. So if you are true, your, true to yourself, you are afraid of nothing. So embrace failure. Huwag magpakamatay. Huwag magmukmu. No, move on. And use that failure to do better and attain your goal. It should serve as a challenge. So in conclusion, my dear students, building a 
a successful career takes time, effort, and patience. You have to sacrifice some free time and leave your comfort zone if you want to succeed. Shaping your career isn't really that difficult. It's only a matter of commitment and hard work. It just takes a courage and commitment to follow your goals in life. The tips I have shared you somehow would be of help to you as it was of help to me when I was going on to my, uh, my professional work. I don't expect you to apply these tips at once, one at a time. No? Baka ma-overwhelm kayo eh, lalo kayo kung wala tapos. Now, I personally believe that a person, a happy person, is the person who always brings his own sunshine. Sabi nga nila, the diamond, wherever you throw it, throw it in the garbage, it shines. So kayo, wherever you are, shine and be yourself. So at this point, I would like to congratulate you, young Ciceros. At this point, you are winners by yourselves. And Class 67, who have initiated the project, the Young Cicero Oratorical Contest, and to Sir Ferolino for uh, making the awarding of the Jocelyn Amigo Ferolino part of this, this occasion and part of Isabella National High School's affair. Thank you po. Maraming salamat. Magandang hapon ay magandang gabi na pala sa lahat. Magandang gabi sa ating lahat. It's so nice to see each other after a hiatus of two or more years. Once again, we thank God that we're all here enjoying the friendship, the company, and the camaraderie of friends and classmates. Masaya tayo kasi balik eskwela tayo. Balik marites din. <laughs> anyway, but 67, through the leadership of our very energetic and generous president, Dr. Aloysius Liagono, would like to thank the school principal, Mr. Silvino Cabangan. Sir, thank you for the enormous support to this project, the Young Cicero Oratorical Arts. I would also like to commend the presence of my bayaw, Dr. Brendan Federlin. Brand, our profound gratitude for being with us always. Josie is indeed with us in spirit. Of course, salute to Mrs. Natalia Lasso de Villa, Job well done, Nati. Nobody could have done it better. Congratulations. <laughs> to the teachers of Isabella National High School and friends and all those who in one way or the other dip their hands to help in this, uh, in this contest, the Young Cicero National Contest. Okay? Maraming salamat sa ating lahat, sa inyong lahat, sa mga parents, and maraming salamat din sa mga contestants. Thank you very much. Ang gagaling ninyo, we were all impressed sa mga ipinakita ninyo. And, uh, but 67, tayo nga tayong lahat. Thank you. Certificate of Appreciation upon Isabella P. Benitez, member of the Board of Judges. <laughs> Certificate of Appreciation upon Petrona Kerubil Laruga.
Certificate of Appreciation upon Aurelia Pitpit Logriquito. Certificate of Appreciation upon Emerlinta Aquino Pagirigan. Certificate of Appreciation of Panosario Lugo Kibayer. For tabulators, Certificate of Appreciation, Chairman of Tabulators, Marietta R. Lusagan. Certificate of Appreciation upon Neolina Ordinario of Power. Certificate of Appreciation upon Elvira C. Lucas. Winners and awarding of cash, trophies, plaques, and certificates by Dr. Elena Ariola, Mr. Kabangan, Ms. Devilia, and Dr. Liagno. Good evening. Now we have the final tabulation of the winners. First, I would like to congratulate everybody for being with us this afternoon, this evening na. Thank you so much for gracing this occasion, initiated by class 1967. Now, they are all winners. Their work was so amazing. I do not know whom to choose a while ago. Sumasakit ang ulo ko. Gusto ko nang lumabas para umihi. But ladies and gentlemen, there is always a room for improvement. And so we have ranked them from one to eight. And we will announce number eight first. Okay? Where are the contestants? May we see the contestants now? Nasa labas kayo? Ay, wala na. Hindi na mag announce <laughs> Alina kayong lahat. You are all winners. And may I call on Dr. Ferrodino also to join us here? Please. Can we also announce that Dr. Ferrodino will give an additional prices for Kasi nakita ko yung red envelope ni Dr. Ferrodino. May ampaw siya. So, wish ko lang... Sana all. <laughs> so, okay. May we now have 
It doesn't mean that you are, if you are in number eight, hindi ka magaling. No. All of you are very, very good. I wish I could go back to the times na high school ako, I've never tasted to join an oratorical contest. Hindi ako marunong mag-English. <laughs> So, okay, that's why I took accounting. <laughs> okay, number eight. We have Mia Bianca Damasco. Let's give her a big hand. The coach, may we call up? Please come over. Mia, will you please come over and the coach? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you get your play. So congratulations, coach. Great job. Mia, oh, oh see Mia. What's he? Coach, yeah. Coach. Okay, sa dami, hindi na namin alam kung paano. Okay. We have, ay, no. Ito na tayo. Ay, kung naayos ang kuglas ko. Okay. Good luck, ha? Galingan, galingan, ha? Galing, galing. Okay. Ha? Okay. Now we have number seven. Princess Sarah Ventura and her coach, please. Wala kasi sa akin. Over. Congratulations. Galing. Ay, good daw. Tingin tayo doon. Okay, now we have number six. Sino kaya? Tawagan na natin si Ashley Jell Guzman. And the coach, please. Who's your coach? Hi. Hi, hello. Sagit na kayo na. Sagit na kayo. Yan, 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 yan. Kasi ito yung ano, ito, ito. Okay. Going up. This is exciting, no? Number five is... Edilito de Lupe, de Lipe, and your coach, please. De Lipe. Okay. 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 Congratulations. Okay, 
Okay. Ako naman ang nini-nervyos. Huh? Our number four is Persis Maduma. Where are you? Your coach? May we call on the coach, please? about these two contestants they were given the golden buzzers because they were supposed to be one of the eight finalists last March 20 no March 19 2020 now they did not join anymore the elimination because it's unfair if they had to join again so I gave them the golden buzzers let's clap our hands for them Okay. Now, but tingin nga ang hawak kamay. Hindi na pa pwede. We will just add, we will just add money if ever. And then how about the trophy, Dr. Liaguno? That would be a very big problem because of the first and the second because according to my to our president he wants to declare both of you are the winners and no one and two so because you were also given the golden buzzers by Mrs. Tevilia without consulting them now both of you will be the winners We have, hindi, we have them both. So, kinuha na nila yung papel sa akin. And, bahala na kayo, hindi ko nakita yung pangalan nila. Both of them are winners. Congratulations. We were really very impressed. Kaya si President namin, first and second sa amin niya. Okay. Golden buzzers kasi itong mga to. And may we have hit them here? Mag picture na tayo, dakay yung dalawa sa bay. Yung dalawang, uh, ano, 
So the trophies, may pagbabago ang trophies, ha? Ibibigay namin sa kanila after the, the, the occasion. Ayan, ayan po. Tapos tawagin natin. Contestants, all of them, the winners, pala, hindi na contestant. Maybe call on the eight winners. everybody to stand for the blessing of the food. Lord, almighty and loving God, we praise you, we worship you, we adore you, we give you thanks. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity that you have brought us together again. But 67. Thank you for all the graces. And now we will pray for the food. Bless us, O Lord, in this thy gift, which we are about to receive. The same Christ, our Lord. Let's all say, Amen. Amen. 